I'm about 95% sure that at some point in your life, you've played with or at least held a Hot Wheels car. There are a few reasons why I'm so confident about that. The first being the fact that Hot Wheels are just a part of childhood. Gearhead or not, we all know the feel and heft of one of those die-cast cars in our hands, and the bright orange of the Hot Wheels tracks. They're as ubiquitous to childhood as sugary cereal on Saturday morning cartoons. The other reason why I'm so confident is that the numbers back up my claim. Hot Wheels are literally the most sold toy in the world. Not an exaggeration. 10 Hot Wheels cars are sold every second. Why are they so popular? Well, there's a ton of reasons. Small cars are always fun, they capture the imagination, and since they're metal, they could stand up to all the jumps, flips, and crashes that a kid could throw at them. There's also the fact that despite being released in 1968, Hot Wheels have always remained the same price, which is about a dollar. That makes them accessible to a lot of people within a wide economic range. I definitely wasn't rich growing up, but I always had plenty of Hot Wheels cars to play with. That's why I was really excited when Mattel invited me to their global design headquarters in El Segundo to show me all the steps that go into designing and producing a Hot Wheels car. I was also there for the private debut of the first Hot Wheels Legends car, the 2 Jet Z, which is based on a real car built by Luis Rodriguez. I want to talk about the tour first because it was absolutely mind-blowing. The tour started off with a visit to the concept design desk where I was shown all of the artistic steps in designing a Hot Wheels car. It all starts with sketches that are usually born from random inspiration. Although as imaginative as the designers can be, they made a note to say that any design they come up with still has to feel like it could actually exist in the real world. That's probably another ingredient of the secret sauce that makes Hot Wheels cars so desirable. Once a sketch is finalized, their artists start creating digital solid models, which is essentially the same as 3D models, though with one major difference. Most 3D models you see in animation or other artistic work are typically hollow on the inside. A digital solid model isn't. It actually has simulated viscosity and hardness which allows the artist to sculpt it as if it were clay. To do this, they use a special physical tool that's held like a sculpting pen. It costs $30,000 and is so precise that there's a version of it that doctors can use to control drone bots that perform surgery. And Mattel is using this thing to design toys. That is nuts. After that, we were taken to the prototyping room, which is essentially a room filled with massive, high-end, top-of-the-line 3D printers. These are definitely not the type that you'd find on someone's desktop. Some of these printers cost 100 grand and use freaking lasers. After the tour, we spent some time playing with one of the tallest Hot Wheel tracks in the country. And then we visited the Hot Wheels garage for the real reason why we were all there. As I mentioned before, this was all part of a private early reveal of the first Hot Wheels Legends car, the 2 Jet Z. In case you're wondering, the car's name, 2Jet Z, is a play on words. The number 2 is for the Toyota 2JZ engine in the back of the car. The Jet is because, well, the car looks like a jet cockpit. And the Z is for the 300ZX that served as the donor chassis for the build. With a custom tune on the AEM standalone ECU, the 2Jet Z makes 517 horsepower. Although inside the cockpit, there's a switch marked afterburner. A flip of that switch instantly boosts the power to 627. This is all in a car that weighs only 1,650 pounds. In the back is a custom exhaust. Lewis wanted to make sure that the exhaust looked like a jet, but he wasn't sure how he was gonna pull it off. Until one day when he was in the kitchen, he saw his wife's vegetable strainer, swiped it, and then modified it to look like an afterburner on the end of the exhaust. He even linked it up to a spring and cable so that when he gets on the throttle, it opens and closes. We got a demonstration of this during the presentation. In case you didn't know, last year Hot Wheels launched a series of car shows called the Hot Wheels Legends Tour. 
The tour visited 15 locations across the country, holding car shows that were open to just about any type of vehicle. At each location, a best of show winner was chosen. Mattel then sent all 15 of those show winning cars to SEMA to pick the best of the best. That honor went to Luis Rodriguez and his custom 2Jet Z build. Part of that honor is being immortalized as a Hot Wheels diecast. We were there as the first production version of the 2Jet Z was revealed to Lewis for the first time. A week later, the Hot Wheels version of the 2Jet Z made its public debut at a Legends Tour event at the Mattel Design HQ with Jay Leno, Adam Carolla, and other automotive figureheads on hand. The event itself was pretty crazy. I've been to a lot of car shows in my time, but I've never been to one that had such a diverse mix of car types and build styles. I saw everything from multi-million dollar hypercars to muscle cars, there were even lowriders and crazy Mad Max style rat rods on hand. All of that was in addition to the full-size Hot Wheels builds on display, my favorite being the Darth Vader and X-Wing cars. After the presentation, I had the chance to speak with Lewis and learn more about the 2Jet Z. One of the first things I wanted to know was where the motivation for the 2Jet Z came from. So the 2Jet Z was a point in my life when I didn't want to continue to, to, to modify something that was already in a pre-existing shell. I didn't want something that was always stuck, that, that hindered me from really reaching my creative potential and looking into what I kind of wanted to make. You know, it, it, it's kind of hard to describe. It's just like you want to go and build something, but there's a firewall there, there's a door there, there's a fender there. You know, maybe you can't really put the catch can there because there's some kind of heat there because the exhaust is on that side. You know, I didn't want to have to cut up a floorboard. I wanted to create what I wanted that actually fit in the right way, the vision that I saw. So with the 2Jet Z, I knew I was going to be building a car from scratch. You know, I had the drivetrain. Originally, my Datsun 240Z, believe it or not, I had that 2JZ in that car, and I was rocking out. I mean, I was driving and enjoying it, and it was ripping, because that car weighed about 2,400 pounds, 2,500 pounds right. or so. And I was like, well, what's the next best thing that I can do? I was like, well, this thing kicked butt with me putting the, the, the 2JZ in that, and that's 1,000 pounds lighter than a Supra. I was like, well, what's the next best stage is to go 1,000 pounds lighter. What if I built an ultra lightweight frame for the 2J? And that's where I really got the ball rolling. It seems like he was really looking for freedom to explore with this build. Along the way, it's obvious that Lewis let his artistic side come out. This is no longer a hobby, okay? This car culture is a mechanical revolution. I mentioned that before. I believe strongly that this truly is the, a modern genre of expressionism. Okay, we're going out there and we're conveying emotions. By what? By, by bringing epoxy to carbon fiber, by bringing a grinder to, to metal, by bringing a welder to a tube frame chassis. We're creating, as builders, we're creating something that's more than just a sum of all their parts. We're creating something that evokes emotion, that inspires us to inspire, the desire to inspire. I said it all the time, you know? It, it, it makes me want to create something, go out there that inspires the next generation of kids to go and outdo me. That's what I want to see. I want to see a kid outdo me because he wants to go and push the boundaries of what's considered normal in society. Because it's beautiful. Being different is beautiful and diversity is where we need to be with, with this car culture. And I, 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 I tell people all the time, I've got like this one, this one, uh, this one sense of sense of mind where it's like the United Nations of gearheads unite. You know, it's, it's, it's people using perseverance dedication and shared information, talking to each other and working as a community to truly create something different and beautiful. And I love that, man. I've got people that call me up all the time and you know, it's, it's, it's uh, price of admission is a six pack. Come over, you have a problem, I'll show you how to do it. And we'll, we'll, we'll throw, back, throw back a few brewskis later, you know? <laughs> Damn right. Car culture is elevated by people like Lewis. People who will break down boundaries to express themselves with drivable art. This is especially notable when they do it all themselves. I wondered what the most difficult part of the build was, and that led to an incredible anecdote. I had to figure out how to do an adapter plate. You know, I had to figure out how to marry that to a transmission to make sure that, that the spline was perfectly lined up with that block. But that wasn't hard. That was, 
That wasn't bad at all. And it's interesting how I did that. I did that with a really old school uh, Shopsmith lathe. I don't know if you know that brand. It was a big brand in, the, in America back in like in the, in the 50s and 60s. It's literally, that's, that's the time frame this, this, this lathe is from. And I got it from a yard sale. Um, I met this, uh, this lovely uh, lady who had it and it belonged to her father. And I, I spoke to her. And uh, she had a pendant on her chest, and it was uh, it was a little fire emblem on it. And I saw it, and I, I started talking to her about that. And she told me that uh, that uh, her father was a first responder for 9/11, and and that he had a love for uh, for working in the garage as much as I did. And she told me that if I wanted the lathe, that she that she knows that it would make her father happy for me to have that and continue the legacy of continuing to use it. And it almost brings a tear to my eye when I think about that, dude. I take that and I use the crap out of that machine. You know why? Because it's it's still it's such a symbol of being able to take your creative potential and put it to metal. You know, and I and I use that. I, I I've just used that to create a new adapter plate for my new project car, my, my future concept car. And I'm, I'm still using it, man, I love it. It's great, it's got the handles on it, you know, and then you gotta like, you gotta like spool it up so that way you, you get it to the right depth and everything, but it's awesome, yeah, yeah. All right. Oh man, all right, I'm not crying, you're crying, okay? Anyway, clearly Lewis is a remarkable dude who's gone on an equally remarkable journey with a 2 Jet Z. By now, my time was getting short, so I asked if he had a message that he wanted to get out to all of the aspiring builders and enthusiasts out there. I'll let Lewis have the last word. This is just for the world. Uh, yeah, here's an important one, okay? Especially for like the next, uh, the next contestants for the, the Hot Wheels Legends Tour. If you're gonna build something, build it for a purpose. Build it for a reason. Because when you have purpose or reason or meaning behind it, it comes out so much better. And what I'm trying to say about that is like, all right, you go and you buy a car and you, you try to flip it. So you go and give it a paint job or you just put it in a new engine and you sell it. You don't care about it, right? But if you take your time to say, you know what, I'm going to build this because I want to spend time with my son in the garage and create some kind of bond between us, you're going to take your time to create something more meaningful. Or you have an idea. You want to build something that's different. You want to build something that's special, not just another, um, generic wing off the block or another decal on the car that everybody else is rocking but you want to build something that looks cool that inspires the next generation of people do it make sure it has meaning to you make sure you want to do it for the right reasons because last thing you want to do is be 15 20 grand into a project and you just give up on it why are you giving up on it because it didn't mean anything to you and that's the thing it's about the build it's about the journey and i, I don't drive the, the jet car that much anymore because it was about the build. It was about getting something done that's never been done before, you know? And now I'm kind of done with it. So it's just like now I'm building the next one because that's that's what kind of kind of excites me. That's what gets my ball rolling is, is just striving to create something that's never been done before. And sharing a vision with the world that I kind of see. United Nations of gearheads, right? Yeah. All right.